Hello there everybody, my name is Bloomer Brown and welcome to episode 2 of Bloomer Brown's modded career mode playthrough of Kerbal Space Program 1.0.5. And with that rather uninspiring introduction out of the way, we find ourselves back out on the launch pad with another attempt at a sounding rocket. Now you may remember in the last episode we had a little bit of a problem in keeping our rocket pointed in the right direction. Uh, but Werner von Karman assures me that his experiments with this new fangle thing called aerodynamics mean that we are in for a better run this time round. Um, yeah, so basically what I've done is to stick fins onto each stage of the rocket to offer a bit of resistance to us kind of flipping out and hopefully keeping the nose pointed as we head up. Uh, the fins themselves decrease in size as we work up to the stages. Uh, the idea being that we, as we drop each stage we still have a fin big enough to hold the rocket steady but at the same time the fins on the upper stage won't be undoing the work of the ones on the stage behind it and a little bit of an explosion there. Uh, I'm not sure what that was. Um, but yeah, I've also angled the fins to give us a bit of rotation and hopefully keep us going fairly straight because although we do have an avionics package, we don't have any way of steering this rocket in any kind of fashion. And as the first stage burns out and the second one lights, things are looking a lot better this time. Uh, I should probably also mention that after the last episode, the rocket I was trying to launch did splash down just north of the KSC and... Being a bit of a fool, I didn't think to grab any of the signs, so I'll probably have to do another mission at some point to take care of that. Uh, and because the rest of this launch is pretty mundane, we are going to jump into a little bit of time acceleration. Uh, just to kind of speed things up. Um, it, it almost seems as though I'm learning how to do this kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, we're just cruising up. Serious Mac effects there, getting a little bit of um, heating effects. The camera's gone crazy, and finally we've dropped the second, the final stage actually. Um, and as we cruise up, the Mac effects dissipate, and we start slowing down. Checking the apoapsis, we are clearly outside the atmosphere. I can tell you right about now that that is going to get up to around about 84 kilometers. Which wasn't the original intention of this rocket launch, but hey, we're just going to roll with it anyway. Um, and with us kind of approaching the edge of the atmosphere, I think we can drop out of time acceleration, jettison our fairing, and I'll hand you back to my original commentary to see what happened next. Uh, oh dear. Um, so, okay, that's a bit of a problem. Um, so we've made it into space. And it's time to begin to do a little bit of science. Um, it isn't actually much of a surprise to me that this rocket did reach space in some ways because uh, this isn't the first attempt at this launch. Uh, I may cut at this point to show you why I am... Oh dear. To show you why... Uh, no, wrong one. Oh, this is, this is going to turn into a bit of a game. Uh, yeah, so I did have a bit of fun there trying to uh, get all the experiments with the probe spinning around on its axis and half the fairing still attached. Um, you also probably heard the reason that I am doing so much post-commentary on this video. Uh, that noise got a hell of a lot worse through a lot of the audio. Uh, but anyway, with a slick swipe effect we can magically jump back in time to the first attempt at this launch and see what went wrong. So, for some reason I became concerned that the probe wasn't going to make it, and I'm not sure if it was the heating effects or what, but I made the snap decision to try to transmit some of the science home, just in case. Um, uh, this really drained my batteries out quite quickly, and left me with no way to deploy my uh, parachute before uh, getting down. Uh, well, this it had a pretty predictable ending for the probe, as you might imagine. Yeah, there we go. And another swipe brings us back to the present, where you can see me picking up the last of the signs and making sure that everything is in order. Uh, I seem to pause for a little bit of a look around. I mean, Kerbal is a rather pretty game. And we also give a little wave goodbye to the fairing that has finally decided to part company with us. Um, we'll probably make some kind of a jump cut at this point into the future where we can see our little probe maybe parachuting down, uh, drifting softly to the surface, and touchdown of our first successful mission beyond the atmosphere of Kerbal. Uh, I think I pause here and, um, you know, 
make some kind of little speech about commemorating this at some point in the future and possibly pondering uh, what uh, autonomous probes might make of flag planting ceremonies. E anyway, recovering the vessel yields us 28.8 signs, bringing our total up to 39. Uh, we also get some funds for the recovered parts, and yeah, that's that's all good stuff. So probably at this point, we should jump in and see what I got up to off camera, uh, because I know cutting details like this out of a series kind of bothers some people, and I would include myself in that bracket too. Uh, so first off, the admin building. I picked up a fundraising campaign thing. It uh, gives us 5% reputation gains uh, for some amount of funds that I can't read off the screen at the moment. Uh, usually this one, it's great for funds, particularly early in the game. Um, granted, we're not really kind of building anything super expensive at the moment. Uh, but as we start to go on, I'm going to be building bigger and more expensive and more ambitious missions. And I've also upgraded the mission control uh, just before launching the sounding rocket for the second time, actually. And it'll give us some extra funds because we can, you know, take up some extra contracts. And speaking of extra contracts, we now have a seven contracts active for ourselves, including a heat shield test landed at Kerbin, a test of the LVT-45 swivel engine, a test of some radial mount parachutes, the RT-10 hammer, and uh, this contract, which is a new one to me and must be part of this update. Um, we need to haul a Mark 1 command pod into flight above Kerbin. Uh, I'm assuming we can get this just by getting the thing airborne since like I don't see any uh, sort of altitude or speed parameters associated with it. Um, yep, we've also got a stack decoupler test and uh, an orbital contract as well. Uh, I think I'm probably going to build some kind of mission to kind of take out, if not all of them, then most of them in one go. Uh, I'm not really ready for orbit yet. I mean, it's, it's not impossible. I mean, we could do it with the parts that we've unlocked. Um, but, like, I mean, our solar, we don't have any solar panels unlocked at the moment. Our batteries are pretty weak. We've still got that 30 part limit in the VAB. I mean, we could find a way around all of that. But, you know, at the same time, I want to keep the progression a bit slower and, you know, kind of more logical or something. And over in the R&D center, I have unlocked the flight control node. Um, and that gives us a few little parts. Um, Yep, that, that second DP-10 is still hanging around in here, and um, I should probably do something about that at some point. Um, oh yes, uh, while wandering around, I did find this light, little item hiding in here in the tech tree while I was recording. Um, it's a bottle of Bob's beer. Uh, it's a part of the Kerbal Inventory System mod. I actually don't think I knew this was in the game. Uh, I may have heard some kind of obscure reference to it uh, at some point. Um, I think it's actually a really cool and fun little idea, and uh, I think I will definitely have to load a few bottles into some of my uh, carbled or crude missions to the moon and Minmus, and uh, if I'm so bold, we might even make it out to Duna and, you know, have a little bit of celebration if uh, the carbals survive the landing. Um, so, yes. Uh, just waiting for the cut, really. Uh, ah, yeah, and here we go. Go. So we see, we're seeing some footage here of me getting ready to launch the next mission. Um, I've obviously been in the VAB and built it. Um, so we are reconditioning the launch pad and building our uh, K1 rocket. And obviously we're going to roll that out. Uh, I won't make you sit through the whole thing. Uh, I just wanted to show that I am still using the mod. And we'll probably cut straight to the launch pad. And here we are out on the launch pad with the K1 rocket. Um, this has probably been a couple of seconds for you. It's actually been, in reality, a few hours for me. Now, this rocket, I'm actually going to just begin starting our, our, our testing. Uh, heat shield. Uh, run test. So that's completing that. Uh, our next test will be, of course, to test... You're hauling this into orbit. Uh, oh, this, yeah, this is. 
And while I fumbled around trying to get to grips with what I had actually planned to do with this mission, an older and wiser version of myself will take over the commentary. Um, so basically the plan is to take out five contracts in one mission. So you've already seen me test the heat shield and when we light up those engines uh, we should complete a contract for the RT-10 hammer and as the rocket leaves the launch pad we will also get a contract I hope for the Merc 1 command pod in flight over carbon. And there we go. Uh, three contracts completed and we've only just lifted off. So we're pretty much golden. Uh, even if this thing explodes or flips out in flight, uh, it doesn't really matter. The mission has kind of been a success. Um, yeah, so the basic design of the rocket, uh, we're looking at a first stage of an RT-10 hammer. Uh, we've got four of those larger sounding rocket motors on the outside, mostly to make it cool. Um, you know, it does look good. Um, but I mean, they do provide a little extra thrust as well. Uh, to get us moving. Uh, the next stage we have the LVT-45 uh, because we do have a contract to test it. I've also brought a little bit of fuel. I don't think you can do it without fuel anymore and there's obviously some kind of a... Uh, I can't see it. Yeah, 14 to 22 kilometers or something. And we've got a little speed thing there as well that we need to be within to test it. And we drop those motors there automatically. Lovely Mac effects there as we come close to twice the speed of sound. And yeah, I think we're getting pretty close to the test, so I'm going to hand you back to the original commentary. And we need to be going between 400 and 590. Now, we're way above that speed. I'm just going to draw that engine. And I'm just going to wait for the numbers. Uh, we're assuming that this flipping out is a test of the command pods, you know, thing with, you know, in preparation for manned flight to see how it responds to, you know, worst case scenarios. And lift, yes. Contract complete. And now... And now it's back to the wiser version of myself again. Um, so we still have the contract for the radial mount parachutes to complete. Uh, while we're getting to that, you might notice that we have a material study mounted just beneath the command pod. Um, and we're kind of going to leave that for the upper atmosphere. Thinking back on it now, I can't actually remember if we grabbed Mystery Goo uh, on the weather balloon. Uh, let's see, yeah, 25 kilometers. Um... Yeah, was there? Did the did the our weather balloon get into the upper atmosphere? And am I missing uh, an opportunity for some mystery goo or not? I'm not sure. And we observed the materials bay. Uh, can't read that, and it's already gone. Okay, yeah. Um, something that I'm actually noticing while I am editing this is uh, simply because I was kind of messing around with an older install I have of the game this week. Uh, there is a distinct lack of lack of clouds. Um, yeah, they. I, I kind of miss my volumetric clouds, and I probably will go looking for them before the next episode. Um, the game is just looking a little bit bland for me at the moment. Um, probably will uh, run my laptop into the ground uh, because yeah, I do actually record and play on a laptop, and I'm you know kind of looking forward to the 1.1 update with all that nice shiny optimization that comes with the new Unity 5 upgrade. And I think we might actually be getting close to the test of the parachute. So I might hand you back to the older version of myself to see how I tried to pull this off. Okay, are we dropping? Yes, we are dropping down. So our speed is picking up. So we need to get below 11. Okay. Uh, I think this will sort of start to stabilize as we go. It should anyway. It should start to go engine in. Okay, something's blowing up, and as it does so, so when we get closer to eleven, what my plan is is to reignite the engine, and uh, slow ourselves down, set off our parachute here, this uh, small parachute, I don't know what it's called, and th then we're going to fire the radial chutes, and hopefully this will work. Uh, 
I mean, if it doesn't, it means that we have the radial mount shoots for free. But if it does, it'll give us, what, six contracts in one mission? I, th I think that's... Is it going to be six contracts? I don't know. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. Hold on. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, 14. Light the engine. 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 Uh, Z. 200 meters per second. Let's get down. Let's get down. I'm going to fire. I'm going to fire that shoot. 12 kilometers. And we're coming down, so we're still we're picking up a little bit of speed. We need to stay under 150. Just gonna pump up the engine. Keep our speed down. Oh, I'm actually tense. <laughs> and fire the shoots. And another contract completed. Well now, I think that let's see how many contracts we actually got with that. Um Okay, contract complete. So that's the radial mount parachute contract. And uh, this is rocket debris destroyed. Oh yeah, that's our solid motors from the sounding rocket motors. And uh, yeah, that's more. So the LT forty LVT forty five swivel. That's the second contract. Hall the Mark One command pod into flight over Kerbin. That's the third. And uh, the RT ten hammer. That's our fourth contract. Heat shield is our fifth contract. Uh, following this one's okay. So five contracts in one mission. Um, now that's what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think I might be getting back into the swing of Kerbal. Uh, we do have a little bit of fuel left. Getting back into the swing of things indeed, Mr. Brown. Um, yeah, so after all the failures kind of at the last episode it was kind of nice to kind of pull off a mission like this um yeah i'd probably do a bit of warbling on the way down but we can kind of skip to me trying to land this thing as slowly and softly as possible i want to gently light the engine okay i'm just gonna give a full blast oh we're very close we're very close we're kicking up dust oh uh, a little bit too much. And the engine's burnt out anyway. Yep, the engine's gone. No more fuel. Will the engine survive? Ah, the engine will survive at this speed. It surely has to. Surely it will. And with the fuel gone, it's a little bit lighter. It should. And it does. Oh, look at that for a landing. Isn't that elegant? Um. Oh. And while I pause to admire the celestial ballet of the moon and Minmus overhead and probably take some kind of a screenshot, uh, we can jump back to the space centre and uh, maybe kind of do some kind of a little debriefing or something. Okay, so we've got 20.4 cents, bringing us up to 77 science, 77.1 science. Excellent. Parts, we got a whole lot of stuff and some funds back from that. Um, so where to first? Let's see what we may be interested in unlocking over here. I think we want to go the science route. Batteries would be very useful because if we start sending up unmanned probes and this is going to take us into solar panels and that kind of thing. And I kind of am thinking about heading to unmanned orbital stuff as soon as possible. Uh, 77 science. General rocketry it would be handy to have, especially the thumb. I'm going to take this just because it'll make launching to orbit the node will unlock in 40 days, so a little over a month. And then on top of that, we've got 57 signs. I think just for the batteries and the thermometer, it's an extra science experiment. Um. We've got these other cameras. I don't know what this what picture quality is in great, but this tiny lightweight camera. Perfect for piloting rovers and probes. Oh. Oh, yes. So does that give us an, uh, an IVA? Oh, if that gives us an IVA, that's going to be even better. Um, but I think I am going to go that route rather than 
yeah we have a small reaction wheel and we've got our um we're not looking for landers or we're not going to be doing any docking for a while we don't need any of these this big heat shield yet um what have we got up there Meh. i think our best route is science to give us to head here for what is it? Uh, basic science. Yeah, it's going to give us the batteries, the uh, state Putnik, and the thermometer. Mm, and we're also going to start getting into radiator panels. That's something the heat mechanic is something that I'm not really familiar with. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to figure out. I'm, I'm taking that. Okay. And over at Mission Control, I have nabbed us four new contracts. Uh, I am leaving one open just in case something kind of interesting pops up over the next couple of days in game. Uh, so yeah, in terms of active contracts, we still have our orbit, orbit curve <laughs> contract and uh, this uh, stack decoupler test. Uh, I have taken contracts for a flight test of the Thumper SRB, a flight test of the Mark 1 command pod, a flight test of the 1.25 meter heat shield, and a ground test of the RT-5 Flea SRB. Uh, more than likely, I will try to do some sort of suborbital test of our command pod, uh, kind of like something a real space program might do, and try to work in some of the other contracts at the same time, and maybe grab some science. Uh, I'm also going to try some kind of an orbital probe. Um, I have a few ideas, ideas that may, might make it kind of interesting. Um, we do have remote tech to contend with, but it shouldn't really be a big deal. I would like the probe to kind of have some kind of a function to it as well, rather than just be a piece of space junk we lob up there for kind of like the sake of a contract. Uh, as well as that, I'm probably going to have to edit out some funds from the save file at some point, uh, just because I'm going to be doing some simulations. Uh, Kerbal Construction Time does allow for that if you pay for it, but uh, I'll probably end up doing the testing uh, sort of in another save file just in case I ruin this and kind of break up the story or something. And for anyone who might be wondering, I will be doing things for real on camera. Uh, so if I kill Kerbals or make a fool of myself, so be it. Uh, I think it's probably kind of obvious from what I showed you with the sounding rocket failures. I mean, I could have just edited that out and pretended it didn't happen. Um, but I think it's more fun this way. Um, I probably will dry run a few big missions, but once I'm recording, that's basically going to be it. Um, so yeah, I hope that you kind of enjoy this, watching this little uh, video. Uh, thank you for tuning in. You have been watching Bloomer Brown on YouTube, and I will see you next time.